Hi, today I'm going to talk about uploading your videos on YouTube. Most of us um, upload all their content produced online and this is the best way to share it uh, because everybody can have access to it without having to physically distribute the media. When I started my uh, experiences with underwater video, I was frustrated by the lack of quality that I was experiencing whilst I was transferring the videos to, to various online platforms. It's how to make sure that when you export the video into YouTube, it's going to have the maximum possible quality and look as much as possible um, like, you, like it does on your computer at home. When I say as much as possible, it's because every step of, uh, of, of, of transfer between your computer and YouTube is affected by what we call a lossy compression. Lossy because there is data loss, and therefore information loss, and therefore quality loss. So it is not possible actually to transfer exactly the same quality of your original source video to YouTube. However, by applying the tips I'm going to discuss, you can make sure that the difference is so small that visually you cannot tell the difference. And this is very important because we put a lot of effort in, putting, in doing our clips. And what you don't want is at the end, in the last step of the whole procedure, the quality somehow gets lost. I'm going to discuss specifically about Final Cut Pro because this is the product that I use. But the tips that I'm going to discuss are exactly the same if you use Adobe Premiere or uh, DaVinci Resolve. None of this program is optimized for video compression. Uh, they're all fantastic programs to edit a video, and this is where the problem lies. So I will show you the same video uploaded three different ways. One is to use the native Final Cut Pro functionality to upload to YouTube, which uses your account detail and pushes directly the file into YouTube. The second one is to produce what is called an H.264 file, an MP4, which we will upload then manually in YouTube. And the third one is the procedure that I use, which is to produce a high-quality ProRes HQ file from YouTube. I'm using 4K content, content and therefore ProRes HQ 42 is recommended, otherwise ProRes is fine. Uh, and then uh, compress separately this video using uh, a free program called Handbrake and finally uploading the video to YouTube. You can then judge by yourself which of these three versions of the same, exactly the same video looks better. So let's get on Final Cut Pro and on the computer and I start looking at how the various steps are put together. Use is to use the native functionality of Final Cut Pro which is under here File Share YouTube. Um, I've chosen a video which is only 1 minute and 33 long and it's not super spectacular but it's got a combination of land and um, in water pictures. This is a 4K video. The first thing that we notice here um, is that it's estimating a size of 231.1 um, megabytes. So let's go on and uh, publish this uh, video. Okay. The background tasks start going. And this is going to be a fairly fast process because um, the timeline is already rendered and is exporting a file in H.264 format. So if you're looking at what the background task is doing, which is here, you can see that it's already writing um, the file. So the, the routines that are within these kind of programs like Final Cut Pro for export um, are typically using hardware acceleration of the CPU um, and therefore are very fast at uh, encoding and writing files. Uh, unfortunately, because the hardware encoding and decoding cannot be uh, fine-tuned, <clears throat> this is not necessarily the highest quality. It's going to be by using the master file option. So we go on Final Cut Share Master File and instead of using YouTube, we go for H.264. You can immediately see that the estimated file size has gone jumped from 231 um, megabits to 663 um, so just by going into this option is nearly triple uh, the size but we need to see what is actually actually happening later this using the H.264 version unfortunately it's not possible to uh, see what um, was the actual size of the file produced for YouTube upload I've looked everywhere in the media but I cannot find it but you can see that this is file at 44.8 
uh, megabit per second, um, which is you know aligned to YouTube uh, recommendation. This file of 528 uh, megabytes, so it's come short, smaller than what um, it was planned at the beginning. So we'll use just the upload functionality of uh, YouTube. So this is our second video. Uh, you can Google uh, using the words YouTube um, encoding settings or upload settings. And here you have various options. Um, the codec is H.264, frame rate, audio container, etc. The most important one is the bit rate which is suggested to be 20, 35 to 45 megabit per second for standard definition, um, standard dynamic range uploads, um, and 53 to 68 for iframe rate, and for HDR is slightly higher, 44 to 56. Um, other um, important uh, factors is that YouTube doesn't like a specific option of the encoder, so it wants maximum two consecutive B frames, it wants a close gop, um, and it doesn't like uh, pyramid uh, uh, frames. So these are the things you need to take into account if you produce file manually. To export what is called a high resolution file from uh, Final Cut Pro, so the option is still Master 5, uh, and instead of using H.264, we're going to use either ProRes 422 or 422 HQ, depending on the initial bitrate of your project. So my projects are recorded at 400 megabits um, per second, and, and therefore I tend to use the ProRes 422 HQ uh, option. But obviously, if you use um, um, simply a 100 megabit option, then it may not be worth it. Anyway, for, for my purposes, I'm going to use this. ProRes is not compressed at all, so you see that the file is significantly larger. It's 836 uh, gigabyte just for 1 minute and 33 of um, of playing, which is you know the pretty solid um, file. So let's um, put it on the desktop and uh, using a third-party tool uh, called Endbreak. You can find it on endbreak.fr. After producing our high-quality ProRes file from Final Cut Pro, we launch uh, Endbreak. Identify our um, source file which is here, is our huge 692 gigabyte file. And I have developed specific presets for handbrake, in this case a YouTube SDR, because we've seen that SDR and HDR have got different bitrate, so this is optimized for 45 uh, megabits. And now, when we start in this kind of, um, um, of, of process, I'm gonna call it handbrake. This is gonna be a much longer encode. Why? Because handbrake, handbrake is not using any hardware acceleration from the CPU, but is using a software acceleration because it controls all these little nice parameters that you see here, is able to control them. And this is what is gonna make the difference in our encoding. So when we start our compression, we will see that the times are not gonna be seconds. These are going to be, you know, minutes, and when the video is longer, it's going to be actually hours. So it says one hour, one minute and forty-six, but it's going to grow very quickly. And this is just for a for a single pass. So in total, we're going to be spending probably ten minutes for a video of, you know, one or two minutes at least. Um, uh, but this is going to give us uh, the best quality.